This is the top video game podcast from HorribleNight.com. It is Thursday, October 3rd, 2013. Coming to you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Join the I'm series. a guest. I have a guest. I'm so excited to have a guest. I kind of thought I went crazy last week. Um, man, that was... I did a solo show last week. Did you did you listen to any it's of that? Very, it's very lowly, lowly gaming podcast. It was. It was. It's what I what I learned from that experience is it's hard to like interject random bits of humor without just like looking totally insane. Um, I think you can. Yes. Like you can when you see people do you know the solo YouTube videos where they're doing news and that kind of thing. They like they you know they cut they. They help the pacing out with all their cuts and their editing and post. You can't really do that live. You're just I'm just kind of reading through news, and I thought it was a little dry, but I did the best yeah. best I could. I, those people are crazy. <laughs> um, you you showed how much better you are than them because you didn't have yeah, to cut. I showed them. I don't know who them is, but <laughs> you showed them. You showed them, dude. Uh, this is the interactive podcast where we ask our live chat some questions of the week and we answer them ourselves um so if you've got your game of the week and your best and the worst uh throw them in chat now and uh we'll talk about them in a little bit but first what have you been up to cole i've been watching a lot of fringe lately i know that show went off the air maybe a year ago two years ago i don't know i think two all the Two years ago, all the uh, seasons are on Amazon Prime, and I believe Netflix as well. I've been watching them on Prime, um, and I, I really enjoy that show a lot. Um, I watched the first two seasons when it was originally on and just kind of gave up, got out of the out of the mode of watching uh, weekly television shows um, as they aired. And so I'm rewatching the first two seasons right now, and I'm going to obviously watch the three, four, and five when, uh, when I get there. But I just, it's, it's, it's very similar to the X-Files. I got a guest. Me. Say hi. Hey. We got a guest. Hey. Isn't it bedtime? Hi, Lily. Good night. Good night. I love you. <laughs> See you, everybody. Say bye, internet. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I never, uh, I never trusted the show Fringe. I liked the first season. And then um, I'm kind of going through a similar thing with Sleepy Hollow. We won't talk about your opinions of that, but I don't yeah. trust Fox to not just all of a sudden cancel <laughs> it. And Fringe always seemed like it was on the fringe. Of it was. It was. Being it canceled. was the. It was the ugly stepchild of Fox. They didn't treat it with you know, with the massive promotion machines that they put behind a Bones or a American Idol or whatever. Yeah. Whatever else shows on Fox. Uh, uh, but it's the little, little show that could, and I'm really interested to get to the the crazy parts of that show. Yeah, I mean, I heard great great things it. as it went on. So yeah, I think they found their found their groove after season two. Yeah, kind of. I gave up on it on season two. So the myth, mythologi- mythological stories in terms of like they they did the monster of the week like X Files, but I think once they they got their that out of the way, I think they kind of it's it. The, I've been thinking the about that story. with Supernatural where that's been going, and then. Uh, the I'll bring up Sleepy Hollow again because the guys that worked on Friends are working on Sleepy Hollow. Um, the finding that balance of your Monster of the Week episodes with your like broader storyline it's it's tough. Um, I don't really know what the right mix is because I enjoy the Monster of the Week stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, and I like and I like and I like the, and I like the aliens like in the X Files. I like the yep. alien storyline. So yep. I mean, all the other Monster of the Weeks were awesome too. It's just uh, it's just a hard balance like. If you're putting out that many episodes, and I think that's why those shows that are 13 episodes are succeeding so much because mm-hmm. they can tell tighter stories and they don't have to stretch. Yeah, 25. Oh, man. You know, those I remember are- like watching when Battlestar Galactica came out and they didn't really know when their end date was. Oh, yeah. They were kind of struggling a little bit and they had the. Um, they went. They had a, a. They had a whole half season on a planet. <laughs> yeah. They had that, and then they had like the water shortage episode. Just didn't feel like it was necessary. It was just kind of we need to have a filler episode because we are need to fill what 13, 14 episodes. So I think now people are getting smarter about how they're writing the television shows, and when they're yeah. off the network, they can be way tighter. And I think that's where you're seeing 
um, a lot more successful shows like on HBO and Showtime and FX and AMC and stuff like that. Yeah, I think the networks are starting to experiment with them too because I know um, Sleepy Hollow is only 13 episodes for its season and they just renewed it. They picked up season two for 13 and I think that's smart. You've got to have like basically a fall show and a spring show and if they can get that figured out. I still don't think the... I don't know, the writing of network television can get to the level of uh, some of the cable shows, so um, that'll be an interesting, but but hopefully, I don't know, the broadcast shows get to be more interesting because of that. So. Absolutely. Um, so, before the show tonight, you saw our little visitor, Lily, uh, jumped in. She's now a star, thanks to that outcast uh, highlight of mine. Um, we were, I was trying to... I was playing with the Chromecast, which has a YouTube app, which works pretty cool with uh, with your laptop. And I was on YouTube, and I'm like, I've always been worried about kids browsing YouTube. And I was like, is there are there like actual channels and actual ways to find kids programming on YouTube? And so I did a couple searches, and I stumbled across They Might Be Giants has a series of podcasts for kids. They're all like animated songs to do with um, the alphabet. And numbers and science. The science ones are the best by far. And I'm guessing, but I know they were pretty close with the uh, the guys that did Homestar Runner. So I would not be surprised if they brought those guys in to do some of the animation because they have the, some some puppet stuff. But I just got done watching about uh, 20 episodes of that show. They're like three minutes a piece, but it was freaking adorable, and I love that band. And them having a kids show makes a hell of a lot of sense. So there is quality kids programming on YouTube. I learned that. Awesome. That's very cool. <laughs> I did also... That's not something, I'm, that's not something that I uh, look a lot into or, or you even think about, so that's yeah. really cool that kind of stuff's out there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a couple of us. PBS has some stuff, but um, on the adult side of things, I guess, I also checked out the second episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Have you watched... Have you- I watched I watched the first part of or the first one. I think I ended up falling asleep because I was late when I was watching it. But um, I don't know. It feels uh, it feels like I'm gonna I could get sucked in like heroes and then be very disappointed. I mean, but it's got I, I thought the same thing. But you know, it has Disney and a, Disney behind it and all the Marvel. And stuff it has the characters, it. yeah. So. I like the first episode because like you, y'all, I like the setup. But ho- holy shit, I I fell asleep during the second episode. I that's not a good sign. I don't fall asleep no. during shows, so uh, no. not so good on that second one. It was just boring. It was yes. like I keep waiting for you know <laughs> characters with superpowers to show up, and it's it's a bunch of humans discovering weird things. I don't know. It was it was. We'll see where it, where it keeps going, but uh, that one took a drop a notch for me. So, fall TV's back though. So apparently, cause that's all I've wanted to talk about lately. Yeah. yeah. All right, video games. Um, game of the week time. Let's actually let's pick through what the community has to say. Uh, Verdian has been playing Terraria, which released its 1.2 uh, version out on PC this week. So um, that's not really up our alley, but. I wish I could get into that game. <laughs> uh, let's see. Nilmar has been playing FIFA 14 and Grand Theft Auto 5. We'll come back to that in a bit because... What a shocker that a European is playing a soccer game. <laughs> and then Aaron's also been playing Grand, Th- Grand Theft Auto 5. Online woes and all. Did... We both kind of passed on GTA. Did you find anything intriguing about... The GTA Online trailer, or that the prospect of that. You know, there's a lot of guys at work that are talking about it, um, and they're all playing together. So that's like starting to you know wear me down a little bit because um, it sounds like they're having a lot of fun, and it's uh, it sounds like it's pretty cool once they're actually in, I guess. Um, but my my stance is if if I get it, it'll be on PC if it ever comes out on PC. Right. So. I'll just deny hey. myself the earthly pleasures of playing GTA 5. You know, if that game shows up in the spring or early summer next year and, you know, I've got a little bit of a lull, I, I'll i check it out. But I've been getting my fill just watching yeah. other people play it, and we'll see where the, on, the online stuff's curious, and if we had people playing. That, but that's that's the thing with any, any 
multiplayer online stuff, you've got to have your crew in. Sure. Working out the timing of having all of you interested at the same time is always usually our, our struggle. So, um, you were watching. Yeah, and I've been watching Andy's Andy streams too. It looks, it's that, I don't know. Like, I am not a big. I get my fill through his streams. Yeah, I'm not a big video game watcher, but that's that game. That seems to be for the, the way for me to actually take in that game because I don't I really have an interest to drive around. So. Um, you and I are both hanging out a little bit during Coop's stream last night. His game of the week is Hard Reset. Uh, unexpected awesomeness, satisfying his current corridor itch quite quite well. What did you think of Hard Reset from what you saw? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I don't think it would be something that I would want to play, uh, just because I'm not as interested in that type of game as Coop is, for sure. Um, but I think it looked really cool, um, and he was having a good time. It, it, it was the your your typical corridor shooter, but the boss that he fought near the end before he stopped streaming was pretty crazy, just like a really tall Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, again, it was it wasn't bad watching, but I'm, I don't think I'll ever play it. It's it's I like the I like the style of that game, and I like shooting robots. So, um, yeah, the weapons are really cool in it. I thought really like had a cool design to them. So. And- Cool, uh, cool little upgrade system because you basically have two types of weapons and you can turn them into anything. And um, there's a lot going on under the hood of that game. And I heard it, he, well, he was saying it's supposed to be like uh, have a decent length to it. He's like probably only halfway done with it. So, um, my game of the week, I played a little bit of Castle Story. So, do you know anything about this game? What is Castle Story? Castle Story is yet another early access release, so enter at your own uh, discretion. But I think it had a pretty successful Kickstarter. This is a Minecraft uh, Cube World um, kind of game where uh, you you have a bunch of minions, these little yellow guys. I forgot the names the names of the guys, but uh, they it's especially like Minecraft, except you build your stuff. Co- like you're controlling classic Warcraft carriers, characters. That's what it, the interface reminded me of. Like I'm playing Warcraft three and ordering my peons around and telling them to bring back yes. stuff. But I'm also like laying out how I want them to build up my castle. And then uh, hmm. in the survival mode, like um, there's kind of a, a timer up in the corner that lets you know when you're about to be attacked by whatever creatures are in the in the land. And I think um, multiplayer, you kind of play against each other that way because you. Your your workers have different classes. Um, I don't think combat's a major focus, but I could be wrong because the the creation side of it is what drew me to it. Um, anyway, I I played about an hour of it the other night, and uh, I am terrible at it, and I didn't understand it for at least half the time. It was <laughs> it was it's really complicated, but um, I started to get into it towards the end, and so it has has a lot of promise. The reason I picked it up is I had a quick conversation with Ethan, and, and he'll probably uh, be writing something on the site about the game soon, because he, he called the game Extraordinary, which is a very, very big word for him. <laughs> so um, I thought I'd pay attention to it. But um, So that's out. that came out last week on Early Access, and uh, 20 bucks. But if you've gotten into Minecraft, Terraria, those types of games, I think this, this has the chance of being one of the next ones. So... Um, I gave it a shot. Um, I'm still a little bit overwhelmed. I mean, you and I haven't really got into the creation games. And no. I've always said it's because I'm afraid I'm going to get sucked in. But it's also, uh, I've talked about before, my kind of paralysis when it comes to actually creating structures in a video game or building things. It's like I just don't know what I want to build, so I don't build anything. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Um, but... This Castles game, or Castle Story, reminds me of a game I used to have when I played, I don't know, when I was a lot younger, called Castles. Uh, it was a game by Interplay, and it, like, it was basically like a World a Warcraft kind of style of game where you have, you set out a layout of a castle, and it, you have workers that come and build, and you have to get supply and like resources and all that stuff. So I'd be interested to see if, um, just looking at some images, it's obviously way better graphically, um, but... I love that Castles game when I was a kid, so I might be into this. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm going to keep keep an eye on it. And then, have you jumped into any early access games at this point? 
No, I have I haven't played any of it. Because I but... still I'm still I, and I think a lot of us are going through trying to figure out how how to negotiate those games. Like how much time do you put into it at that early stage versus when it comes out, especially if you really like the game. Yeah, and I'm at the point where like I don't know how I feel about early access at yeah. all. Um, because I I don't know like I'm the type of gamer who I don't go back to games a lot and I feel like if I play it enough to where I get tired of it if I buy it as an early access then I'll never go back to it when it's the full game mm-hmm. so I'm kind of wary of doing that just personally you know? yep no, I totally I, I get it alright moving on what have you been playing what's your game of the week so a game I actually haven't played a whole lot of games lately uh, last week is I don't know, just other stuff came up, but um, in the past couple weeks I've been playing quite a bit of Evil Land. And Evil Land is a RPG, not surprisingly, <laughs> uh, that starts off like as a Game Boy RPG, and then you find treasure chests that like level up your graphics and your abilities and stuff like that. So right now I'm on... Um, like a 3D polygonal uh, graphics that just I just got pre-rendered backgrounds, and the pre-rendered backgrounds um, were like really uh, pixelated and stuff. And then I just upgraded those last night to pre-rendered HD backgrounds. So yeah, it's kind of do- funny. Like the, the way you fight is. Well, I'll go to question before. I was gonna say, how, yeah, I don't understand how the the upgrade system works because this whole thing is basically an om- uh, an homage to. Like all RPGs throughout history, it's supposed to show the evolution of every all of them. Sure. Um, so do you you upgrade like a piece yeah. at a time? I so, I, I kind of thought it was gonna gonna say, like after after you finish the eight bit quest, all of a sudden you're playing the sixteen bit game and then blah, and onward. No, it's way faster than that. It's oh. Way faster. So like basically, there's just there's these just treasure chests that are littered throughout the land, and every time you open up a treasure chest, you get a new mat, you get a new background, you get a new. F- battle style, you get a new uh, ability to walk diagonally, like it's, you get better music, you get, you know, you go from like 8-bit music to 16-bit orchestra music to like CD quality music to just all these different things are basically it locked inside a treasure chest and you just basically walk up to a tre- treasure chest, open it, and then off your, your game suddenly changes. So it goes from, you know, two-color Game Boy style to... Final Fantasy VII style pretty quickly. So it's not like you're stuck in those eras for very long. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually like the turn-based part of it a lot better than the... Um, or not the turn-based. I like the action RPG style, like the Zelda style, a little bit better than the turn-based. It just seems kind of boring. and The random battles are really... There's, they're not very <laughs> uh, far apart mm-hmm. or spaced far apart. So you're like take a step, fight, take a step, fight, take a step, fight. And that's kind of, that's really annoying. It kind of got me uh, to stop playing it. Um, <laughs> but, I, but I enjoyed the, I enjoyed up to that point um, where the graphics got better and better and like music and uh, gameplay and stuff. Cool. So I don't know how, I don't know how deep I am or how, how long the game even is. Um, but it's just, I don't know. It, I think it's cool for what it is, it, but it's not something that I would recommend to a lot of people. I was, I was thinking about it. Like I, I feel like you might be the target audience for the game. Just you've played RPGs all, all you know throughout the years. Yeah. But like, in some regards, everybody's going to hit a point in that game where it has an era of RPGs that they just can't stand, and so like yeah. it's just like you're waiting for that roadblock to come, and um, I. I it's kind of curious what everybody's would be. Yeah, and I think I think you would get some enjoyment out of it. You definitely get obviously the nostalgia part of things, and like I said, it moves pretty quickly. Um, and there's some like there was one point last night when I was playing uh, where, and I thought it was very very clever. You pissed me off, but it was supposed to piss me off. Mm-hmm. Where you go to one town's member and they say, "Oh, you gotta go talk to this town's member," and they're on the other side of town. And they're like, "Oh, go to this town's member to on the other side of town to ask them about this," and then go back. And it's just like, "You assholes! I know why you did this. It's funny, I get it. 
but Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of a. Yeah. Uh, but that's but that's the but that's the reaction they wanted, you know. Yeah. So. I, it's like there, there's some clever parts, but I don't just like I said it's not. I, clever. Like I, I wondered, I always wondered if Evo Land is a better game a, a better game in describing the game versus actually playing it. So. Yeah, I think you might be right. Um, it reminds me of I always describe South Park that way, and that like the you, you can go through each episode and giving the two two line description of the episode is actually usually funnier than going through the 30 minute episode like sitting through it so i was like oh yeah that concept's really clever that's that's awesome i like but then seeing that stretched out sometimes isn't it isn't doesn't live up to the description so um i've got evil land uh in my queue somewhere i'm sure uh in the middle of the night sometime i'll i'll give it a shot but i'm glad uh I'm glad you played it because, like I said, that was that seemed to be almost targeted at you. So yeah, yeah, it really was. All right, horriblenight.com highlights. Uh, what you got? Um, I really enjoyed Gifford's uh, flashback review, the the retro remake of Flashback that came out in like the early '90s, I think, for Super Nintendo and maybe Genesis. I'm not sure. Um. <laughs> It seemed like he liked the game, and his again like <laughs> there was an, if we had a review score on it, there would be an issue of like trying to um, rectify what the review score was to what actually the content the, the article is. But uh, uh, the more I read it, the more interested I got into flashback. And until, until he got to a point where and he said, if you going in thinking this is going to be like Shadow Complex. Yeah. <laughs> Do not play this game. And I said, all right, that's a perfect review for me because <laughs> it, it told me exactly what I needed to hear and wanted to hear, and it helped me make my decision. So, yeah, I, I just thought it was, uh, you know, I don't get a lot of reviews that have that specific um, draw to me <laughs> or that, that specific point to me and that was definitely one so well, we'll have to play we'll have to tell gifford to play more games that you're interested in so yeah for sure <laughs> but yeah his uh he compared them, he compared them to games that i love and then i'll i won't buy them. his uh yeah his comparison to shadow complex surprised me but after like actually looking at the game i got it and yeah, that would definitely be in my head trying to play the uh the new version i i actually played a while back um the prequel to flashback out of this world slash another world uh they did a little hd yeah, that just came out yeah yeah they did an hd remake of that but it was just um they didn't really redesign it it was just better it was just graphics on top of the original game and it sounds like they actually changed flashback up a little bit so uh but he said it still was kind of true to the original and i really like the original on super nintendo but you got to be in the mood for those games too they're kind of the, the pacing of them is pretty pretty deliberate i'd say sure sure um, I'll give a shout out to uh, Nicole from Pure Geekery. Submitted a uh, another um, iPad game review. Um, she went back and played Knights of the Old Republic, and uh, I have not been brave enough to try this on on a non P- non PC or non console because that game is everywhere now. Um, but yeah, she said it. You know, the game the game's still. Uh, a great game, but it just was never meant for touch. And she just, her problem was whenever she was touching the screen to move around, she couldn't see, like her hand was in the way of what she wanted to see. And it was just a constant, constant battle of covering up the screen versus, uh, you know, being able to actually play it. So it sounded frustrating, but, um, this is her second iPad review. And I, I think you'll see probably one, ooh, one a month from her um, as uh, we continue to kind of work together. Um, I'll, I'll be writing a few um, kind of TV show reviews for, for their site coming up. But um, So just nice little guest post. And check out puregeekery.net if uh, you enjoy, enjoy her writing. Okay, next up, worst of the week in gaming. Let's check in with the community here. Uh, Nilmar, worst of the week is... Grand Theft Auto 5 Online not working correctly, and FIFA 14 crashing a lot. So lots of uh, lots of fun there. And he's also waiting on his gaming computer to come in. So, um, and then let's see. Oh, uh, Coop's worst of the week is that the can- the makers of Candy Crush filed for an IPO this week. He said another evil company is brewing, and I just I've been calling it Zynga 2.0. 
And then Verdian and Aaron all share your worst of the week. So why don't you uh, talk us through that? Um, yeah, so yesterday, or was it yesterday? I think it came out that uh, Mr. Tom Clancy passed away. Uh, and he, you know, I don't know how much involvement he had with video games in terms of, like, creating them or being on the developer side, but his name was on a lot of great video games in the past. Um, and stuff that I played a lot, like the early Splinter Cells, you know, and I think Rainbow Six is probably yeah, that's what I think that's what remembered I remembered by a lot more people um, than even like the Splinter Cell, Splinter Cells, or even the, the Hawks games that Gifford and <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that Nathan Nathan likes so much. But um, you know, I don't think like he had, I don't think he's been really involved with um, games outside of licensing his name, you know, for a long time. So. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just sad to see such a prolific author pass away. Mm-hmm. Somebody that had a, maybe a tertiary a part of, a part of video games, but he wasn't um, too old either, right? No, he was only sixty six. Yeah. There there hasn't been a, any uh, word on why he might yeah. have passed away. If it was just his time or some disease or something like that. But yeah, it was. I know his son is uh, into video game development, so ah. uh, like I was I was always so curious. Is that what his opinion of like how involved he was in his original games versus um i'm assuming he wasn't too involved in the later ones maybe his son was more involved but just like um i mean you know when an author starts off like that uh, what what was the quote i saw that he made it okay for men to read books again or something um yeah something like that and uh but just knowing that never you know probably never in his wildest imagination would video games have been in in his mind when he started uh, started writing and just sure. how much of an impact he's had on video games is that's it's kind of crazy versus uh, uh, where where that all started. So, yeah, and how many franchises have his name attached yeah. to it is pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, uh, I, I'll just laugh at that that comment in chat. It's um, <laughs> a live audience there. Uh, my worst of the week is just. Uh, there was something else that was kind of annoying me about um, game coverage this week, but anytime I see coverage of video game movies, especially anything related to um, somebody just picking up the option uh, to do the movie, um, or like you know potential actors working on things, or a, a script is out, or anything that that is before they've actually started production of this movie, I don't give a shit about, and they shouldn't be allowed to uh, um, to report on. And so the latest one this week was that uh, the World of Warcraft, I mean, the Warcraft movie, excuse me, has picked a release date in December of 2015. I was like, you don't have a, you have a director, you don't have any actors attached to the movie, you don't, you're not starting it, I don't care yet, because none of these movies ever get made, so. Yeah, it's, uh... I don't know about that either. I, just, <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. So they were. It was just all over the place. Kind of. Uh, kind of bugged me. So apparently more than Tom Clancy's death, but that's. Uh, <laughs> that's me. Um, <laughs> best of the week in gaming. Okay, we are gonna close strong with some Nintendo. So hold on to your butts yeah. in the chat. Um, from the, from the chat, Nilmar's best of the week is that he's finally getting his gaming computer. We've been, um, and then Grand Theft Auto Five when it when it works. But yeah, I think even coming up to these console releases, we've been more in the boat of recommending upgrade your computer now. See where the the console wars how they shake out that first year or two, and uh, I hope that upgrade goes well for you, Nilmar. Uh, Coop's best of the week. <laughs> Is finding out that there's going to be a a, des- a beta for Destiny in early 2014. Um, he has already pre-ordered his PlayStation 4, so he went ahead and pre-ordered a copy of Destiny. So, which got me thinking um, that I, I forgot that that was a console exclusive that has no PC released announced. So, uh, wait, is that the Bungie one? Yes, that's the I one. I, was gonna... Like I haven't. Like I'm not on the Titanfall hype train, but it sounds like okay. any time 
anybody gets their hands on it, you quickly jump to that hype train. But Destiny continues to be the the next gen game of choice for me, so I'm I'm pretty excited for it too. I always get those mixed up for some reason. Halo, like Halo Border. I was gonna say Halo Borderlands. So yeah, I just haven't played either one of them, so I can't distinguish them. I guess. <laughs> Um, Aaron's best of the week. He's that he chipped into Kickstart Mighty Number no. Nine and Shantae Half Genie Hero this week in their final hours. Mighty Number no. Nine, I think they hit pretty much all their stretch goals. Um, so here comes more Mega Man. And then, Did you see the Unreal uh, Engine demo of it? Yeah, yeah, but I didn't know what to make of that. I mean, yeah, yeah I look pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited for. I kind of, I kind of want them to do a. <laughs> a version of the game where you can flip between retro graphics and uh, standard graphics. So, but that's <laughs> maybe that that should have been a stretch goal. Uh, and then oh, Verd- shit, yeah. Verdian's best of the week is that the Steam controller looks pretty great, although I don't see myself uh, playing an FPS with it. But is the it is the best a c- controller can do, I guess. And more Steam family sharing beta invites have been sent out, uh, indicating the service is going to be released soon. So, um, some new information there. First on the family sharing, um, I guess it works more like having multiple profiles. It's more for somebody that shares their computer locally with with other family members, perhaps. So you can quickly just uh, swap profiles and get to your games that way, but also share them across uh, the machine with with other family members. More so than kind of how I was picturing it was with sharing it with a friend like across the country. Um, so it's it's more geared towards that. Um, and then uh, we'll have more on the Steam controller. Uh, we have a conversation uh, going offline about it. Uh, um, we'll be posting that uh, Friday, I believe. So uh, we'll we'll get to the Steam controller. But um, Cole, what's your best of the week? My best of the week is a two-parter. Uh, they're interrelated, though. Um, Aaron buying a Wii U is my best of the week. <laughs> it's your fault. Because finally, he bought one. And basically, he bought one because of Wind Waker HD that got released um, digitally. And I think it comes out this week. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's retail. retail yeah. box copy. Um, so we've been playing. You've been playing it online. I've been playing it uh, in the privacy of my own home. It's ugly, isn't and it? And it's terrible. <laughs> like that's the thing. And like, and I haven't played it on the TV yet. I've only been playing it on the gamepad, um, just because that, that we use the living room and my wife's been watching TV. And I was like, yeah, let's, she's not watching the show I'm interested in. So let's fire up some Wind Waker. Uh, but holy shit! Like, and I just played it. You know, less than a year ago on the GameCube or the Wii slash GameCube, and just the, the amount of visual upgrades they did is pretty incredible. Just with the lighting alone, I think is is amazing with the shadows and just you know all that stuff. So, so can I get? It's a, a beautiful game. It's a beautiful game. Can Nintendo give me a subscription to like HD versions of all of their games every generation? Like, if they just... Like, I was thinking about this. Like, if they just keep, like, you know, go back to the GameCube, go to your 3D, your your polygonal games, just, like, just upgrade the graphics to the next gen every time you have a new console. And I will... Except I will, for Super Mario Sunshine. Well, that Don't doesn't... That's not, real, that's, not that's, that's not a real... That's not a real game. Don't touch it. Not, Galaxy, that's not, like... The Galaxies, I know people have been talking about how good they look with the Dolphin emulator. Yeah. I will fucking buy them on the eShop yeah. if you release both of them. I mean, I, I guess I'm at the point where, you know, all my Wii U anger has just, you know, it's gone. It, it, it's packaged up elsewhere. I understand. Like, this isn't a system I recommend to very many people. But if we're going to just go full bore, this is a Nintendo first party system, then just then just give it to me. Own it. Just yeah. Own just it. Flood of re-releases. Just give me the options to the whole library. Give me some sort of subscription where I can get to everything, and and you will continue to get my money. Um, speaking of which, uh, I determined that I think I still gotta go through the whole list, but right now, off the top of my head, Super Mario 3D World might be the game I'm most excited for in the next couple of months. <laughs> Dude, especially after that trailer on yeah. Monday. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> that was, I was blown away. 
I'm just saying I, I, I've made it well known on the site that I'm not a fan of cats. So I was worried about Cat Mario, but I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. Goomba Cats. It was just a z- it was a zany, happy video game trailer, and there was just like I don't know, it just it hit the right tone with me, and I'm I am just really excited for that game. Both you and I really like uh, 3D Land on on the 3DS, yes. so um, and I'm looking forward to the, the local multiplayer on this. Um, and I just it got me excited about um, like I said, Nintendo's kind of HD graphics, like everything they're yeah, doing with their style looks, looks good. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you know, what the new Wii U Zelda looks like just with HD graphics. Oh, please, please, just keep going with the Wind Waker stuff. Just that's yeah, why that's, not? go with that style. Uh, yeah, and also Goomba Cats. We have to give a shout out to the Goomba Cats because <laughs> that blew my fucking mind. Okay, uh, we're gonna get out of here. One last question uh, after the show, we're gonna try out some Diablo three, and. W- you and I were having conversations trying to pick the multiplayer game, and I'm kind of curious um, as to why we're jumping to Diablo 3 first versus, uh, say, Torchlight 2, because you're not the, the biggest, uh, you know, point-and-click action RPG guy, um, but this is this is, this is is kind of the game you've been edging to. What, what's your thought process there? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with it being released on PS3 and Xbox 360, honestly. It kind of so hype train decision? Yeah, hype train decision. And I really enjoyed the first Torchlight, um, and I, I'm the, I just haven't played the Torchlight 2 yet. Um, but the Diablo 3 has that free uh, free trial of Starter Edition. Mm-hmm. So jumped on that, and uh, I'd, I'd written about it over a year ago when it came out, trying to play it on my <laughs> yeah. iMac. Yeah, you had that, that honest, was, I'm going to play through Diablo 3, and we're going we're gonna yeah. to document this. And it was just... It was just too hard to do on the iMac, and it looked like shit, and it was slow. And then, you know, got the new PC, and I totally forgot about it until it started coming out again for PS3 and Xbox. And wanted to give it another shot, and, you know, played it for an hour last night, and basically got to the same spot I had got before on the iMac. Yeah, because I still had my character um, that I was playing before, too, so. (laughs) The one benefit of all their online connectivity. Yeah, yeah. so it was pretty cool. And now, and now it's working. Yeah, you know, I will. I will say that, that bullshit. Diablo three, October third, twenty thirteen. Diablo three works. <laughs> it took him a while because I think I made. I I, I tried the game like trying to go back to the game maybe two or three months ago, and just yeah. on a whim loaded it up and happened to load it up during one of their network outages. And I was like, uh. "Are you kidding me?" Because <laughs> I had the worst. Um, launch week luck with that game. So, um, and we, we we've talked about that extensively. But yeah. uh, that's it for tonight's podcast. Uh, thanks for everybody that submitted your answers. We appreciate it. Um, give some give us some love on iTunes uh, if you like the show. And we will be back again next week. We'll see you then. <laughs>